Hallelujah. Okay. Let's open the scriptures. <clears throat> I think we'll learn a lot today. Amen. <clears throat> Maybe we can start with Mark 14. Mark 14. Let's read 37. Then he came and found them asleep, or found them sleeping, and said to Peter, and said to Peter, Simon, are you sleeping? Could you not watch one hour? Verse 38, watch and pray, lest you enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. You hear that verse? I want to read it again. Then he came and found them sleeping. Then he came and found them sleeping. At that and said to Peter, it. Simon, are you sleeping? At Simeon or Ovechi. Will you not watch one hour? One hour. Our Hona we teach and a great evil. I'll read it again. He says, Then he came at Lama Huita and found them sleeping, Barovici, and said to Peter, I will let a little Simon, are you Simeon? Are you sleeping? Our Rovici, could you not watch one hour? Watch and pray. Paramang Lest you enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing. But the flesh is weak. Minama Yafokola. Let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for your word. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I was learning this, that's the way I'm reading it, that's how I was reading, asking questions. When Jesus came back from where he left them, he found them sleeping. He asked them, ah, Simon, in fact, in fact, he was expecting Simon to be awake. You know, here you could see that when he came back, the first person he expected that would be awake was Simon. Ah, we have a problem there was Simon. Even you, you are sleeping. Or Simon, you are now awake. And that's where he began to talk about the temptation that will come to Simon. You say, Simon, if you know what will happen, you are not supposed to be sleeping. Are you also sleeping? You know, if you read there, you see that our Lord was aware of everything. So he said, you must be careful that if you don't watch and pray, you will enter into temptation. You know, this one is, it means that we are not supposed to be tempted. Anymore. There are temptations that we drive ourselves to because well, we don't watch and pray. But, but today, I want to talk about a personal temptation. A temptation that was allowed for you. That I have to come direct to you. It's called personal temptation. Tell me about this personal temptation. Look here. There's a temptation that you drive yourself to. 
Remember, every Christian must go through something. Every Christian must face this challenge or another. Peter was not supposed to have gone through this challenge. His problem was, by the time, time when he was supposed to be praying, he was asleep. I don't know if you are hearing that. If he might have prayed, he was supposed to be having boldness to answer when he was questioned. So, what is personal temptation? It's a temptation that challenges your love in the Lord. In other words, when it comes to you, overcoming it is to prove that you love Jesus Christ. Let's read Matthew 18. From verse 7 to 9. So you can understand that personal temptation is more than any other temptation. Because it comes to you direct. And no one will help you but yourself. If we read Matthew 18 from verse 7, it says, Woe to the world because of the offenses, for the offenses must come. But woe to that man by whom the offense comes. Let me read verse 8. If your hand or foot causes you to sin, cut it off and cast it from you. It is better for you to enter into life lame or maimed, rather having two hands or two feet to be casted into the everlasting life. Because the Lord rather than having two eyes to be cast into hell. So if you can see here, the personal one is this what you can do to you to overcome that temptation. Look here. Look here. Everyone will face a stumbling block or an offense. How you deal with that an offense it challenges you personally. If you know that this person has caused an offense that makes your eye to sin. In other words, you are invited to use your eye in a wrong direction. So many people are there to make you to do that. So what is a temptation for you to overcome? So what is a temptation for you to overcome? So what is a temptation for you to overcome? It becomes personal than that one. It becomes personal than that one. Going to get his own challenge. That one will be punished for what he is doing to you. But deal with yourself. 
you have got eye now that is looking. It's better you cut it out. It's better you cut that hand out. You have overcome personal temptation. How can you say it's whom who, who makes me to do this? That person is allowed to do that. You to overcome that personal one. There's a reaction on you. I don't think you like that. So now the Bible says it becomes personal to you because you know what is happening after you have been tempted. So what is important to deal with Anything in your body. So, Therefore, it means there is no one who will say, blaming that one. The issue is whatever you see, it's wrong, responding to the temptations or the tempter. You need to cut it off. And you cut it off. If someone is offending you, you know that person is not yet personal. It becomes personal to yourself how you respond. If someone challenges you, people will still go to challenge you. But be able to deal with your reaction because of the love of Christ. Deal with your reaction. Know what to answer because of the love of Christ. How many of you understand what I'm saying? If I clap you, I want to tell you, I clap you. I didn't tempt you. I didn't tempt you. The reaction of the clap is tempting. Your response to that clap, it matters. That is why today we have got Christians that after they've seen the that is fruits why of their challenge, they, they react. Even the prayers you are offering is based on the reactions you are experiencing. But you don't know the person who's causing that. You don't know the person who's witching you. You don't know the person who's lying to you, fighting you. So it becomes personal. And it means your response. So if your response is perfect from the word, you are more like Christ. Because he who is ruled by, by the word is shaped like Christ. To be like Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I was reading 1 Corinthians chapter 13 from verse 1 to 13 chapter 13 from 1 to 13 you know I found many things there I just found many things that I want to speak with you can you just read verse 1 in Amplified because that is the only chapter that is the only chapter in the book that is perfect. 13 13. Verse 13. Chapter 13, verse from verse 1. From verse 1. If I speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love for others growing out of God's love for me, then I have become any only a noisy gong or a clinging symbol, just an annoying distraction. And if I have the gift of prophecy and speak a new message from God to the people and understand the mis all mysteries 
and possess all knowledge and if I have all sufficient faith so that I can remove mountains but do not have love reaching out to others I am nothing if I give all my possessions to feed the poor and if I surrender my body to be bent but do not have love it does me no good at all Love endures with patience and serenity. Love is kind and thoughtful and is not jealous or envious. Love does not brag and is not proud or arrogant. It is not rude. It is not self-seeking. It is not provoked nor overly sensitive and easily angered. It does not take into account a wrong in endure. It does not rejoice at injustice but rejoices with the truth. When right and truth prevail love bears all things regardless of what comes. Believe all things looking for the best in each one. Hopes all things. Remaining steadfast during difficult times enduring all things without weakening. Love never fails. It never fades nor ends. But as for prophecies, they will pass away. As for tongues, they will cease. As for the gift of special knowledge, it will pass away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. For our knowledge is fragmentary and incomplete. But when that which is complete and perfect comes, that which is incomplete and partially will pass away. When I was a child, I talked like a child. I thought like a child. I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I did away with childish things. For now, in this time of imperfection, we see in a mirror dimly a blurred reflection, a riddle, an enigma. But what then when the time of perfection comes we will see reality face to face now i know in part just in fragments but then i will know fully just uh, just as i have fully known but god and now there remains faith abiding trust in god and his promises hope confidence expectation of eternal salvation love unselfish love for others growing out of God's love for me yes. these three the choicest great great but the greatest of these is love thank you I wanted us to read this but I also want to explain to you and I <laughs> to you read a lot this but the time of Paul Christianity was not easy like now. People were, you know, crying to have spiritual gifts. And uh, everybody wanted to have a gift which is better than other. It was worse in the church of Corinth. That is where you see Paul. That's why Rebana Paulo writing this that what is important is when you overcome a personal temptation with love. A personal temptation if you overcome it with love you enter God a place where God is. You begin to see God face to face. You begin to see that it's not materials that makes you better, it's Him. You know, by the time of uh, Paul, everybody wanted to have one, two, three, very fast. But there were challenges all the time. And also it was not easy to be known. But now Paul said, hey, 
what is important is to have the fruits that you will get after you have been tempted personally and you reach a level where you are matured where now you can speak like a man you know one of our problems is you know we are so much like babies. And we are saving God that we don't know. Paul says, you reach a place where you find that when the love prevails, after all these challenges, where love prevails, it will have all these fruits. And he says, you see, prophecy will come to an end. But love it takes you there. But I, I want to tell you something that, uh, you know, maybe don't ever think I'm against anything. Always prophecies that we give you are small. Paul said we prophesy in part. Do you know that he who is in love with God prophecy to him is useless. I'm trying to tell you something like that. The moment the moment you are filled with love because love open your understanding and present you where you can speak like men. Now you see things the way God sees them. The moment when you are challenged and overcome the challenge because of the love of God, any challenge that comes to you, you won't pray against it because you can see where you are going. So therefore, prophecies are necessary for you. Because you know very well that even when you are facing this challenge and you want to face it on this challenge and you understand that oh, you understand because of the love of Christ you must go through this challenge. I don't know if you are hearing that. Tell me, but I must go through this challenge. And he who is and overcoming he that challenge, he overcoming because of what? Of love. And that love makes him to understand a personal temptation. And this personal temptation is there to and bring you to maturity where you will understand the things of God and the promises of God. Therefore, there are things you won't even pray concerning that. All right, let me just give you some things that have been written there which are the fruits number one there is I mean it's patience patience means you, you are able to wait these are the fruit that you will have when you are facing personal temptation because because of love, you will have patience what is the, the meaning of patience it means no hurry. So, no hurry. When when you 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 found a word and you were told that this word will come to pass in your life, you won't complain because there's no hurry. There's patience the love of Christ in you rules you. It makes you to understand that even if it can be two or five years to come, but God cannot lie. Why you love God? Because He's always faithful. And His and eyes are faithful. So now you are facing a challenge. So this challenge. 
Now, when you understand personal temptation, that is challenging your love for him. The fruit, which is patience, will prevail. You know, hurry. No hurry, hurry. Can you tell somebody, hey, there's no hurry? Have patience. In other words, you will endure. I don't know if you're hearing me. Temptation will come. You will endure it. No hurry. Listen, when God wants to do big things sometimes, He allowed you to be left in the dark. But because you love God and you know that personal temptation is challenging that What you are going to do, you won't hurry. You will endure what you are going through. Why? The love in you of Why? God. The love of, the love of God. That, that, God. that, that no one can separate you from. Is in you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Number two is kindness. Kindness, it deals with pride. Therefore, you won't be proud. Remember that there's no issue of rushing. And because you love Christ. You, in fact, you know this kindness issue, it means, you know, you, there will be no day where you will prove a point. In a place where you are of the best, but they will find you being humbled. Remember, this is a personal temptation. That that will be be pride. So kindness will cool you down. So you can pass them thinking they know nothing. But the Not long I found that we people who are preaching the word of God, we are lacking kindness. I can give you an example. Even you Christians, you are doing that. Do you know that it's not good for you to show people things what you are having? Because when you do that, you are them small. It's not a testimony that of edifying another. I mean, why don't you show you are sick? Why don't you show you are sick? Go to the Facebook and say, I'm sick. But why do you show that you are healed? Why do you have to show the car you are driving? So kindness always calm you down. Because to you, all promises in Christ are yes and amen. I don't know if you're hearing me. Look here, if you try to show show things, the day when you have got a challenge, people will love to check if you are, you are having those things. And you are going to be an example of failure. Devil always attacks what you show. So now you have to have kindness. Tell me about have kindness. I mean, you must never use your intelligence in the weakness of someone. Number three, generosity. Generosity, it means kuluka. Love without competition. In other words, maybe compassion works in you. You know, the, the, the book of Acts chapter 2, it shows that the church, on what they had, they will share to everyone. Generosity was working. So there was no one who can laugh at another. 
Generosity kills jealousy. Tell about generosity kills jealousy. Where you are strong, you need to share. There will be no day where you can laugh at anyone. I don't know if you are hearing me. Many of us, we are tempted. It becomes so personal. Where we need to prove we are better than others. The reason why the Spirit of God cannot operate in us today. Generosity is a problem. It's not there. We are not generous. Where someone lacks is our job. I mean, listen to this. When God shows you the lack of someone, it's for you to minister. It's not for you to judge the person. The weakness of others is a judgment for you. So a personal temptation, when it comes to you, it will try to prove you are better than others. Whereas you are supposed to minister to others. There is humility. Humility means love in hiding. Because you don't parade. I'm sure you are hearing that. Amen. So now, whatever you are doing, you are not showing people. If you are showing it people, it means there is something that you want to gain. I'm talking about temptation which is personal. Where your heart is challenged for the love of God. Remember the Bible says, even when we pray, we enter our closet. And he who sees in the secret will have the reward of the Holy Spirit. He will answer us openly. Unselfishness is to seek God with those who seek him. If now unselfishness enters you, you know, you, it makes you to retaliate unselfishness makes you to cancel a spirit that will make others to look smaller. I don't know if you are hearing me. Issues of temper. Never get irritated when you have love. The last one is righteousness. If you have righteousness automatically, you know, if you can read there, it says, you will be slow in exposing. You will love in conduct. I don't know if you're hearing that. Listen to this. We are all faced to respond. It becomes a personal temptation. When your righteousness is better than others, you don't need to prove them that they are in sin. You, you know, the Bible says, yes, you must expose the darkness. But you will find a way because of love in you. Of trying to correct them to come to a right path. So if you have that righteousness, you will be slow in exposing You know when I was reading uh, concerning righteousness, I, I love a lot when I found this revelation that slow in exposing. Meaning, you are bound to expose. But you are not supposed to rush to expose. And also, you are judged also the intentions of 
exposing. If now you are exposing, you forget, and you are to expose for the sake of your own grounds, you are sinning. You fall in the temptation. You are no longer a tool to help others. You are also causing a stumbling block. You are also causing an offense. I don't know if you are hearing me. How many of you are hearing me? Are you hearing what I'm trying to tell you? Today, God is going to help you to overcome. Let's read, I want to show you something. Let's read uh, Matthew 26. I want to show you especially verse 50. Verse 50. I want to tell you something about verse 50. Read verse 50. Uh -huh. It says what? Yeah. Verse 50. Yes. It says, Jesus said to Judas, Friend, do what you came for. Then they came and seized Jesus and arrested him. You know, uh, let, let's, let's read that verse again. Listen to that verse. Yeah. Jesus said to Judas, Friend, do what you came for. Then they came and seized Jesus and arrested him. You know, I've read about Jesus in the last minute of his life. He loved his disciples dearly. It was the love in Jesus that captivated him to fulfill his assignment. The moment he saw Judas coming, this is a lesson to all of us. The moment he saw Judas coming, Jesus here was a, this was a very serious personal temptation. You must, you must know that uh, uh, the disciples were not even away. Their knowledge in the spirit was limited. They remember when, when, when Judas eat from the same uh, uh, place. When they were asking each other who's going to betray. They found out, but when Jesus said, what you want to do, do it quickly. You, you begin to hear a different they began to say, we knew that he have got money, so he has been descended to do something. No one was worried. This was so personal that Jesus was away. Listen, it's only love when you are full of love that how it gives you spiritual eyes to understand a personal temptation. Let me say it again. It's only love of God in you that brings understanding of a personal temptation. When, when that love was full in you, it says, go and do what you want to do. Now, after he has done all so, he was coming, he was coming. He was coming, they were having, I mean, all the armor of that time. If it is of today, they were, they were having AK-47. Yeah. Then AK-47 was coming. Now, I don't know if you are hearing me. But listen to this. Look, Look what Jesus did. did. I, I will read here in, in, in John 18. But let's look at verse 15. On the same chapter we are talking about. Anamo 18. Friend. Mohozi. Friend. How can Mohozi. Jesus call Judas friend? I want to tell you. Jesus Akabicha Juan Judas Yare Mohozi. It means Jesus was still having hope with Judas. Ora ori Jesus na sanali kulufe lo mola u Judas. That Judas is up to you. Ora Judas tabaye ichwa mwenye. To send yourself to hell. Ora utoro mele di hell. Even when you have betrayed me. Lega wose chuo feri chuo unge ka unteki. I'm still ready to accept you. Kesa o keke mishiri chuo rikuwa mwenye. 
So you could see Jesus. Never commit any sin because of Judas. Because when Judas was coming, the Bible says he called him friend. Friends. Oh my friend. Meaning that Judas had an opportunity. That after he has done that, Jesus still Can we read John 18 verse 2? And look at this temptation. And Judas who betrayed him also knew, knew the place for Jesus often met there with his disciple, verse 33. He says, then Judas, having received a detachment of troops, here you can see, a a a of troops, soldiers here, Mashole. and officers, eh, I mean police, big police, Le from the chief priests and Pharisees, came there there with, with lanterns, with lanterns, with lanterns, can you see there? Lanterns and what? Yeah, torches and weapons. For Jesus, therefore, knowing all things that Jesus will come upon him, knowing all things that will come. Can you ask your neighbor? Do you know what you are going through? You knew that that will come to you. Were you aware of what you are going through? You knew it will come to you. You can handle it better. I mean, you won't be angry. Because you, know, you won't pray a useless prayer. So Jesus knew everything. Here. He says, whom are you seeking? That's right. They answer him. Jesus of Jesus Nazareth. And Judas, Judas who betrayed him, also stood with them. Now, when he said to them, I'm he, they turn back and fall to the ground. If I was there, if I was there, I mean, when Jesus said, I'm he, they fall down. If it was me, I would say, can you see I'm anointed? Next time I will kill you. Are you hearing me? You know, here Jesus, he knew, therefore, there was nothing to prove. He had nothing to prove. Prove to anyone. Okay, let's read, continue. You see there. He says what in chapter 18, let's verse 6. Now, when he has said to them, I'm he, they they back and back and fell to the ground. Verse seven. Seven. Then he asked them again. Ah, 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 Jesus, he, ah. he asked them again. They are we now here, yeah, you could see that Jesus might have waited them to stand up. They stood up. Look at this person. The disciples there, they were just saying, I know. They were speaking in tongues. We know him. We know him. This guy, we know him. He's a savior. He's a messiah. Look at this, so all of them, troops. Okay. Oh, let's read verse 7, Mama. You say what? Read verse in, in 7. In Amplified. Then he asked them again. Whom are you seeking? You see, this second verse, this one, this question was not a simple question. He asked them. Look, look, let me read for you. He says, Whom do you want? Whom are you seeking? Jesus here was not trembling. He said, whom are you seeking? And they said, Jesus Bare. of Nazareth. I'm sure Jesus they were trembling. The Nazarene. They were trembling there. They they said, whom are you man. seeking? They trembled. They said, Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus of Nazareth. Look, Jesus, verse 8. 
have told you that I'm here. Therefore, if you seek me, let this go their way, my God. Jesus knew that this is a personal temptation. He said, look, look here. You are seeking me. They say yes. They fall down. He asked them for the second time. I mean, here you could see Jesus was different with us. Whom are you seeking? If it was Elijah, if in Elia, Elijah could not waste time. <laughs> Elia nagas fechenako. After they fall down, Elijah would say, hey, guys, kill them. It, it was Elijah. Elijah would just destroy them. But Jesus knew this is personal. It's Jesus to to the cross. Because you know, when temptation is personal, there are many things to stop that temptation. They will come they will like they have solved the problem. Jesus was anointed. The anointing upon him was like it can prevent the suffering. You know, I, I've learned that, that many people are so much anointed that the anointing, the anointing in them it makes them to do what is contrary to the will of God. When anointing is upon you now, doing with it, it, doing whatever, it can make them not to fulfill what God wants. So Jesus, the moment he realized, ah, this is anointing, and this is my assignment, so, so I must must never allow my anointing. So an action that I will never allow it to, to prevent the will. God wants me to die. So I can still use the anointing and overcome and find a way out. Same applies, you can use anointing to get money to solve the problem of hunger. I don't know if you are hearing me. You can use anointing for anything. But Jesus said, no, 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 no. This is personal. God has allowed it. So because God has allowed it, I must go through this. I must never use anointing to find another way. I don't know if you are hearing me. And the Bible says from there, he asked them and said, if you are searching for me, these ones allow them to go. Arrest me. And the Bible says, he fulfilled the scripture that he never allowed anyone. He never lost anyone. I don't know if you are hearing that. Most of the time in our battles, we love to involve others. In our challenges, which are so personal to us, we bring others to fight for us. Tell someone say, hey, why are you gathering others to fight for you? It's a personal temptation. Listen, there are things that God will never do until you consider it personal. With the love you endure it. And when you do that, you will overcome even if it looks like death, but you will reason. I don't know if you are hearing me. Can you ask somebody, what are you facing? God has never allowed that that you will be held by someone. That's why, that's why if you tell someone, will be shocked about that is you. Why, how if you are praying and you are getting all these things, how can you be sick when you are facing all you are that? You are fasting, you are doing all that. It's personal. It's a personal temptation. You can use it for your own good. You can use it for your own good. You can use it for your own good. Just say, hey. If, it, if you tell somebody who won't understand it. One time, I, uh, one lady, she, I mean, I was with my mom when we were still staying here. 
And we had one woman, she had a tech shop. So she used to bless us. Like were two. This other one was supported, but this other one. I, I, I used to normally go there to get something. But the day we go prove this is personal. She came to my house. I didn't even have a sugar. There was no bread, there was no sugar. And then, you know, that day she taught me another faith. Say, Pastor, if you want to see sugar, your faith must increase. If you want sugar, take, uh, you know, a container. Put it here. And you sleep here. I said, God, I won't stand up until you feel sugar. Feel sugar. Drink sugar. I knew she's telling me that she will never give me sugar. <laughs> From that day, she left. I said, sugar is over. <laughs> I said, that lady will never give me sugar. So she showed me where to get sugar. When she went, I said, this is personal. Ah, The person who have right to help is not helping. I must love Christ more. go closer more. And something will happen. It is personal. You can't even explain to say, you, you the person won't understand. The person will never understand. If you say you don't have money, will never understand you. If you say you are sick, will never Understand if you say it's tough, you will never understand. If you say it's tough, you will never understand. If you say it's tough, you will never understand. If you say it's tough, you will never understand. If you say it's tough, you will never understand. If you say it's you will never understand. If you say it's tough, you 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 Job also faced the personal one. From verse 11 to 12, he said, Job, just read from 11 to 12. You see the personal. Verse 11 to 12, for the one at Job. 11. But put forth your hand now and touch, destroy all that he has. And he will surely curse you to the face. Then the Lord said to Satan, Behold, all that Job has is in your power. Only do not put your hand on the man himself. So Satan departed from the presence of the Lord. You can hear this was the first challenge to Job. You know, Satan was asking and... Satan and I will he said, Satan was saying, ah, no, I know you. Ah, you, you, you. Always I've tried to go and attack Job. I found a face. When I want to attack him, I found a face. I found a face around him. You know, a hedge is a face that you can't claim. So he said, no, I'm, I mean, this man, if you can, I mean, if you can just curse him, he's going to curse you also. If you destroy everything, you will see this man will curse you. The reason why he's blessing you is because of the account. The reason why he's going to charge you is because, is because things are going well. If you read from verse 15, read verse 15, read verse 15, there, you'll be surprised. After Satan did that, left the presence of God and did that, Job just praised God. Right, verse, verse 15, say what? 15. Yeah, 15 to 20. And the Sabians attacked and swooped down on them. Okay, and took the first group that, you know, 
After that, the Serbians were sent to attack. Right. On them and took away the animals. They also killed the servants with the edge of the sword. The servants, they came there. And the, I, this, okay, okay, there were servants. There were animals. So the servants came. They killed all those people and take away the animals. Okay, carry on. And I alone have escaped to tell you. Can you see, look at this thing. What was supposed to be affecting Job was a report. Job was very rich to extend that he could not go to the field and check his thing. But if you can hear here, it's only the report. The person says, I alone, I've escaped to tell you. Why, why you didn't die? Why you didn't die with others? Okay. Carry on reading. 16, while he was still speaking, Another messenger also came and said, Ah, 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 stop there, Mama. When that one was reporting, another one is coming to report. To confuse Job now. You know, you know, when, when devil wants to work, when it's personal, he wants to confuse you first. This method, this method is confusion. When this one is talking, another one appears. Ah. So, okay, carry on, Mama. Also came and said, the fire of God, lightning, has fallen from the heaven and has bent up the sheep and the servants and consumed them. Uh, and I alone have escaped to tell you. Why you didn't die there? Why you escaped to tell me? Why when I was Asha, and, uh, Where did you get guys to come and tell me? Because this is and the and thing. Is that you people, when you, you hear many reports, which are contrary to your faith, I escaped. Even me, I come to tell you that they were... so this attack is like God attacking now. Okay, carry on, Mama. Sorry, where am I? Yeah. While he was still speaking, even him. This is Are the third one. Another third messenger one. also came and said, The Chaldeans formed the three bands mm -hmm. and made a raid on the camels and have taken them away and have killed the servants while with the edge. Of the sword, yeah. and I alone have escaped to tell you. I carry on reading. It's like Job is getting many reports now. Carry on. The reporter Job is getting at 18. Yeah. While he was still speaking, mm. another messenger mm. also came and said, Your sons and your daughters were eating and drinking wine in their oldest brother's house, yeah. and suddenly a great wind came from across the desert and struck the four corners of the house and it fell on the young people and they died and I alone have escaped to tell you. Uh. Then Job got up and tore his robe and shaved his head in mourning for the children and he fell to the ground and worshipped God. He said, naked without possessions I came into this world from my mother's womb and naked I will return there the Lord gave and the Lord has taken away blessed be the name of the Lord I wanted to, you to understand why Job was in a position that if I hear that I will stop preaching if I I, <laughs> just, I mean your house is burnt <laughs> you are all the animals have been taken. When I'm still standing here, another one is reporting here. When this one was finished, another one said, even me, when it's finished, he said, I'm the last one to come and report. Job knew this is so personal. He knew that this is so personal. Job knew this is so personal. This is not normal. This is not normal. 
I mean, I'm saving God. I'm this is not normal. You know what he did this he, he, When he hear about his children, you heard that. He never say, God, what about my children? He never, say, he never use his mouth to sin again. He just fall himself to the ground. Oh no, and began to glorify God. This is not, he did the abnormal. Because your response to abnormality needs your faith to that situation. He glorified God. Oh God. You are the one who gave me this. So I'm not intimidating. This is not normal. I know it's personal. I want to show you that after he did that, Satan realized that ah, this man is not taking it personal. Can we read Job 2? Job 2. Job chapter 2. If we read from 7 to 10, it's fine. Arab from verse 7 to verse 10. Yeah, just check there. We read there. Is there John chapter 2. Yeah. From verse 7. So Satan departed from the presence of the Lord and struck Job with loathsome boils and agonizing painful sores from the sole of his foot to the crown of his head. And Job took a piece of broken pottery with which, with which to scrape himself and he sat down among the ashes, rubbish heaps. Then his wife said to him, do you still cling to your integrity and your faith and trust in God without blaming him? Curse God and die. But he said to her, you speak as one of the spiritually foolish woman speaks ignorant and oblivious to God, to God's will. Shall we indeed accept only good from God and not also accept adversity and disaster in spite of all this? Job did not sin with words from his lips. All people that they want God to use them or bless them, they must pay the price. Now this, this was becoming personal. You see, Satan attacked there. Satan he, he attacked there, he attacked children. But now, now it's sickness on him. And then after sickness on him, the wife said, are you still holding to your integrity? No, it's better you curse this God. She spoke the same topic of the devil. It was so personal. This is the person who was to encourage you. Now in her now, Satan is speaking. And you see, when you reach a point where people are supposed to encourage you, I see you as a problem. It's not normal. Then she said, you are still holding to your integrity. You are still holding to your the Bible says he moved out from his chair. He shaved his ears. He sit on ashes. He took a stick. Like he began to. The wife was tired. Was, I just, I mean, you know, wives. <laughs> I understand why he had this kind of a wife. He was rich. Now, when the, she realized that the riches are gone, she said, hey, me. Me. She, Satan enters Satan and began to show her this man used to say God is doing this God. No, he must curse this God. Listen to this. If you have not met a temptation by the person close to you, you are not a Christian. 
Tell your neighbor, if you have not met a temptation by the person so close to you, you are not a Christian. Say it again. I know, I know you people, you know how to, to cry. You know, if you go to the funeral, when you are going to bury, a, I mean, a, a friend or maybe a brother of your, of, of your friend, you'll be standing very close to your friend. If your friend does not cry, you don't cry. If a friend says, <laughs> You cover your friend like that. And he said, oh, my friend, my friend. Because you, you, are, you are afraid for your friend to, to question you. But this one now, you could not even question the wife of John. She was meaning the business job. I didn't love you for this. I, I didn't love you that you must sit like this. You're losing everything. Even if you you die, after you die, I'm going to marry you. Think about the words that Job had. You have lost children. You have lost riches. The wife was encouraging you. Say, ah, me, no. You are smelling. Ah. 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 You are smelling. Ah. I, mean, I mean, when you want to birth, you take ah. some ah. pipe. Just like this. I said, no, if truly you are serving God, God must do something. I don't know if you are hearing me. I decided to dwell in this because many of you, you are defeated in personal <laughs> temptations. If you want to see the temptation that has been written in 1 Corinthians 10, go and read it. Verse 13. Verse 13. Just read chapter 10. First Corinthians 10. Read that verse clearly. You will understand it. You will understand it 10. if you read from 12. Verse 13. It's a personal temptation this one. It's not majority one. This one. Read verse 12. Therefore, let the one who thinks he stand firm, uh -huh. immune to temptation, being overconfident and self-righteous, take care that he does not fall into sin and condemnation, nor temptation regardless of its source, has overtaken or enticed you that is not common to human experience, nor is any temptation unusual or beyond human resistance, but God is faithful to his word. He is compassionate and trustworthy. And he will not, not let you be tempted beyond your ability to resist. But along with the temptation, he has in the past and is now and will always provide the way you out as well so that you will be able to endure it without yielding and will overcome temptation okay. with joy. Stop there. Okay, listen to this. I'm closing very soon. The way to overcome a personal temptation is the way to be able to endure it. For you to find a space to escape it will be open if you endure. That's if not, you will find another way. For you to overcome that temptation. Just, just endure. Just endure. Let's take, uh, you know, people are talking about you. And speaking, you endure. You become used to that. You become used to, you carry on what you do. God will open a door for you. But if you try to respond well, try to defend yourself, you are going to be tempted to do something that you are not used to. That temptation will bring 
stress. Because it's personal, it's hidden. Go through it. And thank God for it. When you are doing that, you are growing to another level. You are maturing. It's your breakthrough. God will open a space. I'm not saying. When you are facing financial challenge, sit down. I'm not saying that. I said, try, do what you are doing. Sometimes you are doing business, it's not doing anything. Don't change it to another. We are people that alter all the time. When you are studying this tomorrow, when you fail, you study the other one. Your failure sharpen you. Look here. If you are going through the past failures, you are no longer going through them when you know that you went through them. You are going through them if you are still thinking about them. So you can brush them aside and believe that God is taking you forward. Our challenges today, challenges most of us here, we, we are fighting our fight by the things of the past. We have been tempted and we change direction. Others, we cannot do it again. In your marriage, you face temptation. Somebody left you. You don't believe you can marry again. When you look at everybody, you see them the same. When you look at everybody, you see them God is giving you a wisdom. If you endure that pain, overcome, Jesus, from there you can mold the better and sharper. You can do business better and sharper. Any failure does not makes you a slave. Is there to rectify you so that you do things better? I see some people who are facing personal temptations. I want to give you this word. This year you are passing it. This year you are overcoming it. What you cannot tell someone, you will tell someone as a testimony. What you cannot even explain to someone, you will say it out as a testimony. If you believe Shout hallelujah. One of our problems of personal temptation, I want to read here, we close. It's 1 Timothy. If we read verse 6 and 9, I mean, chapter 6, verse 9. Chapter 6, verse 9. I just want us to read that we close. This is the thing that devil is using on us. Read. Yeah, listen to th but those listen. who are not financially ethical mm. and crave to get rich with a compulsive greedy longing for wealth mm. fall into temptation and a trap and into many foolish and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction leading to personal misery. Did you hear that verse? Read, read again, Mama. This is the verse that 99% of Christians are basing on the riches. But those who are not financially ethical and crave to get rich with a compulsive, greedy longing for wealth fall into temptation and a trap and into many foolish and harmful desires that plunge people into ruin and destruction, leading to personal misery. Today, if you are in a church and your life is not moving, what do you say? Many of us, we are no longer spiritual. 
when we come to church is for materials gain. What makes us to know this church, this pastor, that church? We want to see ourselves expanding. But the things that will leave them behind. Those who crave to be rich Mahumo. ethical riches you know these things called riches are not even there this thing will never make you better I know many people who are in misery what the Bible says because when they appear in public they are, they are celebrities. But their life in the dark, in Mara the woods, when they appear, they try everything to get money. Satan catch them. They have things that they can't tell you. This is the time that you know, you must seek God. And you must never take advantage of anyone. You seek him. Not riches. Now, gospel is riches. If I say receive money, amen. And if I say receive Christ, oh, amen. The life you are living does not That's why now today we have got criminals in churches. That is why we have got criminals in churches. That's why everything is around today. That is why we have got criminals If truly we crave to get money to reach, where are we going to fall?